Hey everyone, did you finish your first block? Are you ready to move on to more? Hey everyone, Kristen Som here. I have to show you this. <laughs> oh no, can you see him? This is my archer and he is scared of thunder and there is thunder right now. <laughs> so he is joining me for this video. So we get to move on to block two. If you finished the first one, which was never settle, then we're gonna move on to the, um, the half square. So I'm doing them in my own order. You can do them however you wanna do them, but I like to put them together in the way that they are going to come together so you can start feeling like you're, you're advancing. So we're gonna work on the half square triangles today. I almost forgot, I have to eat some ice cream. Oh my god. Mmm, look at that. There's caramel in there. Yup, yup, yup. Yummy, yummy. Are you eating your ice cream? <laughs> Don't forget to share pictures. Okay. Oh boy, that's rich. <laughs> so, the half square triangles, these will be pieced in the hoop, and we all know Kristen really likes the piecing project. So, these will be fun to do. So we are gonna do four of the little strips of the half square triangles, A, B, C, and D. So the biggest tip that I can give you is to put your fabrics in order, all right? I swear this will make your life so much easier. It's Otherwise it's pretty extensive to go over um, each one, but this video will have it. Um, I'll show you pictures of each step anyway. So whatever works for you. But for me, I'm going to put them in order. Archer's hearing thunder. All right. So let's start by going over um, each of the half square triangles. So for A, this is A. So the first piece is the gray stripes. And the second one is the orange stars. The third one is the white on white cherries. Hopefully you can see that. And then the fourth one is um, purple. It's a silky solid purple, kind of a violet color. Maybe it's called violet. I don't know what they're called. Sorry. Uh, white on white houndstooth and then blue silky solid. I love this color. I would call this cornflower blue. Tell me what you think. I think it's cornflower blue. All right. So that is all for A. For B, it is going to start with the pink stars the pink on pink stars and then the white houndstooth there you go and then that cornflower blue silky solid and the white on white cherries there you go now you can see it and then the orange stars and lastly the white and it's like a light gray white with light gray uh, stripes <coughs> excuse me this one was from boardwalk if I recall so one thing I want to point out um, is I did back all of mine with fusible stabilizer. They all have fusible stabilizer. On the piece projects, it's very optional and very personal preference. So a lot of people do not, and that is fine. Um, if you use the Clover folding pen, which I have not purchased and have not tried, but it everybody that has it loves it. So that makes it really easy to have them um, fold over and lay flat. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, the only thing is that when you're doing the quilting, remember if you are not backing this, it will, um, very likely pull in a little bit. It shouldn't matter on this one because there's so much extra fabric, um, going over on the edges and then we will do that tack down line. So it's either way, it's really personal preference. I like that the crispness, all right. I really like that they're very crisp and, um, they fold over really well with no little bubbles or anything when I back all of my fabrics. So that's my personal preference. You do not have to do that. It's up to you. You could try both ways and see what you think. All right. So that was B for, um, the half square triangle C. We're going to start with the purple silky solid violet really. And then the white on uh, white houndstooth, <coughs> excuse me. And then the yellow with <coughs> <coughs> sorry, I have COVID. Oh gosh, it's awful. It's really not that bad. In all honesty, I'll tell you it's like a cold, right? But anyway, I know a ton of you have already had it and it's my turn. So yellow with big white dots and then the white on white cherries 
and the minty uh, doodle fabric. And lastly, the stripes. So it's the white with light gray stripes. So keep in mind that these are directional and I will show you in photos when we get to that point, but you wanna make sure to pay attention to the fact that it is a directional fabric. All right, so that was the third one, which is letter C. My ice cream is melting. <laughs> we gotta hurry up. All right, and then the fourth one. So for D, this one is for D. It is the blue, cornflower blue, <clears throat> and then white with cherries. And it's like a coral pink of the doodle. <coughs> it's very stormy here. It's very interesting. I just got back from California and kind of already missing it. Um, white on white houndstooth. And then the pink star fabric. And the white on white cherries. So while I was in California, I did a bunch of bike rides with my friends. I had so much fun super great and i did everything outdoors and when i was indoors i wore a mask and yet got sick kind of a bummer but um COVID is uh is pretty rampant there in um california it's not so bad here but anyway so um so that's a b c and d and like i said put them in the order that you're going to use them it really will make it so much easier and uh, we are going to quilt this. So when we quilt, we always use batting. And <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the final cut size of this, do I have that? Yeah, final cut size is two and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want our batting to be three by seven. So three by seven. And since we're making four of them, we want four pieces that are three by seven. So one quick note, if you are going to do a bunch of these in one hooping, which I very likely will do, and we'll show you how. You really don't have to cut your batting <coughs> individually. You could do one big piece of batting that will save you a little cutting time. Or you can do it this way, like I did. It's fine. But if you do it this way, you want four pieces that are three by seven. Oh, excuse me. All right, so then um, ice cream. <laughs> So then uh, we are going to quilt these. So it's kind of funny. We are going to quilt them a little bit different. So A, remember A, we are going to do in the lines fabric. It's called lines five and we're going to use two by six. So since our final cut size is two and a half by six and a half, we know we want a quilting design that is a half inch smaller. So two by six in the lines. And then for the second one, I think this is for B and D, not B and C, but D and B and D. This is B, this is D. We are going to quilt these using, uh, what is it? Two by six of food four, food four in B and D. All right, and then for C, that's this one, we are going to do again two by six because our final cut size is two and a half by six and a half, and we are going to do food five, food five. All right, so these will be fun. I love the piecing projects. I don't know why. It's like a brain activity, you know, to get it just right and to, to do all the flipping and trimming. And I, I always have found them very fun. I really enjoy uh, the piecing projects. All right, so we are only going to use, I think, one of them at, at this point where we are in our quilt but, or our pillow, and we will use the rest later, but we'll have them already, already all together. So that's perfect. We'll just save them. So those are the fabrics that we want and the quilting designs we want, and the batting, like I said, is three by seven, um, and I keep all of mine all together in my little packet here. And so let's go ahead and get started on our half square triangles. And don't forget your ice cream. Okay, are you ready for a stretch exercise? So this one will um, stretch us. Uh, if you choose to merge the four half square triangles all together and do the quilting, um, there's uh, some work to it. But you can do them individually if you prefer. You can do two in a hoop depending on your, your hoop options. Or you, if you've got a very large hoop, you can do four in one hooping. But again, it, it will take a little bit of stretching exercise to us. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. Um, I thought I had it all done earlier and, and sent it to my machine and realized I didn't do the quilting. So I'm starting over. <laughs> so let's see. So I'm in, in Brilliance Essentials and it 
is right now on my 9 by 14 hoop, but I decided I want to use my 10 by 16 hoop just to give myself a little bit of extra rim for um, all of that paper piecing. So I'm going to go ahead and go here to my preferences and click on my 10 by 16 hoop. And I learned something very important that um, if you want to do your align and distribute, you have to do it before you bring in designs on top of designs or it doesn't work. So um, I had to start over with that too. So I'm on my 10 by 16 hoop. You can see it down here. If I double click on that, it will um, change the orientation so that I can see it well. So I'm going to go ahead and start by bringing in the first quilting design. Always start with the quilting. Not always actually, but in this instance, we are going to start with the quilting. So go to merge stitch file and find the quilting design. So I'm going to close this. It's just asking where do you have your quilting design for me to be able to open. So here is my two scoops quilting bundle and the very first one is lines five. So lines five and we are, I'm using Pez for my brother machine. Click on whatever format that your machine uses and then we're looking for two by six. So click on double click on that and it brings it to the center of your hoop. So I'm going to start by moving this over. I click on the stitching and just move it over and it doesn't have to be exact um, but I do want it over on the edge. So on this um, notice that it has the five steps. So as always the first step is the placement of the uh, batting and then the tack down of the batting. The third one is the placement of the main fabric. We're not going to need that one since we are piecing half square triangles. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. So I'm going to click the third one here and then click delete. And same thing with the one right after that is the tack down of the main fabric. So we don't need that. So I'm gonna click delete. All right, so now I have my three um, different steps. So it's just the batting placement and tack down and then the quilting. That's the first one. So the second one is to um, bring in food four. So I go to merge stitch file and instead of lines five, I am going to look for food four. Click on that, block by block, Pez, and then two by six. All right, so there's that one. So I'm going to go, go ahead and click on that and move it over. And same thing. So we don't need all five of these steps. So I'm going to click on the third one. You can see it here, food four. So if I click up here, that's the whole thing. And then I want the third step of that, which is right here. You can see two, three. And I'm going to click delete. And then two, three again and click delete. So I have just the placement and the tack down of the batting and then I have the quilting design. All right, so now I I need this one again, but I'm going I want to do them in order. So I have A and B and then C and D. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the one for C, which is food 5. Close this. And here is food 5 embroidery files block by block, Pez, and two by six. Double click and it goes to the center and I'm going to move it over. Okay, and same thing. So we're on the third step now, A, B, C, one, two, three, and then I am going to take the third step of three. So three, three right here. I'm gonna click on that and click delete. And then the next three, three, and click delete. All right, so again, placement and tack down of the batting and then the quilting design. All right, and then we need the fourth one. So the fourth one is actually the same as this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, food four. I'm gonna say control C and control V and then I'm going to just click on it and move it over. All right, so now I have all four of the strips and it's just the quilting so far. We need to bring in the half square triangle. But before we bring that in, it's pretty important now to do our align and distribute. And you don't have to, you can just um, click on it and move it to where you want it to be, where you think it will be evened up. It, it's not, a, not super important at all, but we have that feature in Brilliance and so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try. 
So if I go up here to utility, notice I, I copied and I clicked on everything to select it. So I click all. If you don't select everything, then it, it won't move anything. Okay, so utility, uh, align and distribute, distribute tab, and then I believe it was this upper one. So extent of hoop, because I want to utilize every bit of my hoop for this, and then I believe it was this upper one that says center. Let's try it. Yep, perfect. Let's see, close. All right, so what that did is it gives me a lot of space in between each of them for all that extra fabric. So that, that works really well for me. I like that. It's pretty far over on the edge. Let me think if we... I think I'm going to move them over just a bit. So this one, I feel like that's a little too close. So I'm going to move these two edge ones over just a bit so that they're not quite on the edge. Okay, so that is just the quilting. Now we need to bring in that half square triangle. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, just a little. Let, let's go ahead and give it a try. So um, we are eventually going to move the quilting designs because we want those last. That's super important to remember. Um, but first we're going to bring in those triangles. So I'm going to go to merge stitch file and close the quilting. And I'm going to look for two scoops, bench pillow, embroidery files, pez, and I'm gonna look for the half square triangle a and C. This is the first one. So I'm going to double click on that and it goes to the center and I'm going to go ahead and bring it on top of the quilting design that we have. I'm just centering it. All right, that looks good. Okay, now I need to copy and paste this, but first I want to make those changes so I don't have to do it quite as many times. So I am going to change almost all of the colors just so that I know what is going to join together and what is not going to. So on all of these default blue and oranges, I want to change every single one of those because we already have it in our quilting design and it's just a lot easier if we change the colors then it joins just the colors that we want it to join. So this first one, that Shy Flamingo, that I already tested it and it works fine. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that this first one, I'm just going to change the, there are five colors of blue and orange, and I'm just going to change them to the same order. So if I click on the color here and click on the first blue that comes up, it is dark aqua. I'm going to click on that and say, okay. And you can see it changed from default blue to dark aqua. So that's great. So this default orange, same thing. I'm going to click on the orange and click on the first orange that comes up, which is blaze and say, okay. All right, and then we're on the second one. So I'm gonna change this to the second blue, which is marine, say okay. Orange, click on the color, sit, click on the second orange, which is oriel, and say okay. Third one, third blue, which is Mar uh, Hawaiian blue, say okay. Third orange is coral, say okay. And fourth blue is mercury. And fourth orange, two, three, four is lava. And our last one, this fifth blue is one, two, three, four, five. Blue is tropical. And our fifth orange, one, two, three, four, five is strawberry blonde. All right, and then tango works. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave tango. Okay, so that one is all done. We could copy and paste right now, but then it would put it in the order of this jumping to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep them in order. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this second one. So B is what we need. So we need to find, go up here to merge stitch file, and we are going to look for the half square triangle in B and D, it's right here. So I'm gonna click on that, double click, and it'll bring it to the workspace right in the center and I'm going to go ahead and move that and I am just centering it over the quilting design that is right there. All right, now same thing, just like we did on the last, all right? Very easily, the first one was Shy Flamingo, I'm gonna keep that and then click on the first blue is Dark Aqua. 
first orange is blaze second blue is marine second orange is oriole third blue is hawaiian blue third orange is coral fourth blue two three four is mercury fourth orange is lava fifth blue is tropical fifth orange is strawberry blonde and then tango was fine all right so that is all done we have the a and the b so to get the them copied to also the next c and d we're just going to highlight on this um actually that highlighted just the quilting we don't want the quilting we want the um oh i need to move this over here all right, so you can see, if I close all of these, let me close them so you can see everything all together. Okay, so we have six parts, right? One, that's the first one is the quilting of the first one, the quilting of the second, the third is the quilting, the fourth of the quilting. And then we have um, all of the half square triangle design for A and half the half square triangle design for B. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the half square triangle for A and I'm going to click on Control C on my keyboard to copy and Control V to paste it. And then I am going to just move it over to C. And I'm going to center it over the quilting design, click outside of it so I can see. And I'm gonna go ahead and close this so that I can see everything. So I have that one's A, there's B, and there's C. So we need D, which is the same as B. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on number six, this whole six here, and I'm gonna say Control C and Control V, and then I'm gonna move it over to on top of the last set, which is D. Okay, and then I'm just gonna close it so that it's easier to see. All right, so we have eight steps now. So it feels like we're done, but we are definitely not. So we need to remember to move the quilting design. So remember, we've got the quilting design up here, and we, we want it on top of everything we've done. We're going to go ahead and do the placement and tack down of the quilting on all four strips, and then we're going to do the half square triangle on all four strips, after all of that piecing is done, then we want to do the quilting design on top of those. So to do that, that means that we need to move the quilting design last. So the quilting design is up here, and I didn't find a really easy way to move it. If I, I thought I could just right click on it and say move last, but it just stays there because it's staying within the one, the first step. So that didn't work. So what will work is if I click on this and move it to eight, this last step here, if I bring this down here, click outside, there we go, and just hold it over eight. My dogs are coming in. Hello. All right, and so now you can see that it moved down here to the last step in there. If I click on this, it's at the very top of this last step. We don't want it to be at the top. So now what we can do is we can click, right click and click move last and notice it goes to the end, all right? So that's exactly where we want it to be. That's perfect. So I am going to go ahead and close this and this. So we have the first one done, all right? So you can see if I click on the quilting, we all we have here now is the placement and the tack down of the batting. We don't have the quilting design in there, so that's perfect. So we need to do that for two, three, and four. So here's two, and here's our quilting design. So again, if I click on that and move it, I need to just drag it down to eight. It drops in eight, and it goes right to the top, and then I can right click on that and click move last. All right, and you can see it goes down to the bottom here, so that's perfect. All right, so that we have that, I can close two. Now we're on three. So on number three, here's number three, and that is the quilting design. We want to drop that into eight, just like we did the other two. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
I need to click elsewhere and then click and drag. And I just move it into 8 and open up 8. And I can see it's the first item. So if I right click on that and say move last, now it's at the bottom. All right, and we have one more to do. How you doing so far? All right, 3 is done. So 4, there is our quilting design. It's the turquoise. The last item under number four. So if I click on that and drag it into eight, then it goes to the top. There it is. And I right click on that and say move last. All right, so let's close everything so we can see where we're at. All right, so one, two, three, and four are just the quilting. You can see just the, not the quilting, sorry, the um, placement and tack down of our batting. And then we've moved the quilting to the bottom of eight. So on here, here is our um, half square triangle for all of the last one. And then here is the quilting designs, the four quilting designs. And since they're all the same color, we're hoping that they're going to all join together. So that's the plan. So we have everything in the direction that we want them and everything is lined up really well. Remember I said that you have to make sure to align your blocks um, from the start when you do your, when you put your uh, batting placements in because now that there are um, other things on top of it, we can't move it. All right, so Archer, sorry. All right, if I go to, let's see, what did we want to do now? Now we want to do a color sort, and we, we're going to cross our fingers that everything sorts in the way that we're hoping. All right, I'm going to go ahead and try that color sort now. So I go to Utility, Color Sort, and it's thinking, thinking, it has reduced it by 42 color changes. So I'm going to click New View. This is very important. If I click New View, watch what happens. It opens up another tab. So see this tab here? Here's our original one with all of the different steps and the 60 color stops so that we haven't changed anything. This is a different view. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just change my hoop. It changes the direction of the hoop for some reason, but that's OK. All right, so let's just see what it did. So we have, everything is in one step now. There is the placement for the batting on all four. So that's perfect, exactly what we wanted to happen. Here is the tack down of the batting, that's perfect. Then we have the um, template that we will stitch on our batting and that is all together for all four, that's perfect. And then the first step, second step, third, fourth, fifth, Six, seven, eight, lava, tropical. These are all perfect. Oh my goodness. And then the final, and look at that. All the quilting is together. Oh, <laughs> I'm pretty excited. That worked on the first try. So I hope it works for you as well. Um, if not, just make sure that, they, that you change the color on every item of the um, half score triangle and then they all join together perfectly and we have our quilting on the top as the very last item so that worked out absolutely perfectly I'm very happy with it all right so then we would just do a file save as save stitch file as and then change it um, change the name to whatever you want I'm going to do half square triangle together I have all four of mine together and I am replacing the one that I forgot the quilting. <laughs> all right, so that was, I know it's a little bit of um, brain activity and a little bit of work now, but once we bring it to the machine, we don't have to think about anything and it will be all done perfectly. So I'm, I'm pretty happy about it. I wanna hear if you join yours together in two and a hoop or four and a hoop or whatever works for you, I wanna hear about it.
And my shirt today is an ice cream cone and it is from um, Embroidery Boutique. It is a monogram ice cream cone. How fun is that? And the monogram on the center of the ice cream cone is from Applique Market. Um, and pretty fun. So look underneath this video for information. There are links to the design and also the uh, monogram font. Mm -hmm. 